Okay, so we're going to be looking at networks in this section, starting off with the two types of networks that you need to know for the exam, which is a LAN and a WAN. So what exactly is a network? A network is when we've got two or more devices, doesn't just have to be computers, connected together to share information and resources. Now by resources that could mean um, files, folders, printers, uh, all sorts of different things that you can use a computer for. So if we start by looking at one of the types of networks that most of you are probably familiar with uh, since they are often found in businesses, schools and universities, there is the local area network. Now the key words that you need to know for the exam is basically that it's held on a small geographical area. In other words, it's usually located on one single site, like within one building. All the hardware is owned by the organisation that uses it. So every single piece of hardware within that building should be owned by that company. Now a LAN can be wired or wireless. You can have devices cabled in or you can have them all on the Wi-Fi. If they're cabled in, then they're going to use mostly Ethernet cables of some description or some sort of wireless access. Often <coughs> a local area network can be kept within your own house. So inside your house where you live you've got a small network probably with maybe one or two computers on it you'll have a tablet maybe pc um, mobile phones and so on so the other type of network that we need to look at is a wired area network now this is basically when you have multiple lands connected from different geographical locations all connected together to form one wider area network so for example, a business with offices in different countries or in different parts of the UK. Those companies will hire the infrastructure, equipment going between the two sites or the multiple sites. And we hire those equipment from ISPs, Internet Service Providers. So examples of Internet Service Providers would be like BT, Sky, uh, Virgin and so on. You're basically hiring all the equipment from them. Now, between the sites, it's going to use fiber optic or copper wires underneath the floor to connect all of these different uh, parts of the network together. Sometimes, if it's over big, big geographical distance, it could use satellite link or radio. The internet is the biggest example of a wired area network. When people say the internet, you automatically think, oh, it's like Google, and you go on and you search for things. The internet is the actual hardware that connects all the different networks together. Now you might be asking yourself, why do we actually use networks? What are the, what are the reasons? So if we take a look at a list of advantages, you're trying to explain each one. So the first advantage of a network is to share files is easy. So if you look at a school scenario, every single student can access like a shared area where they can go on and open a particular file maybe open up templates to use for a particular piece of work and basically access all the teachers can access the same files um, for teaching purposes. Then if you look at it from working collaboratively, so if you're part of a team in a business, you can all access the same information so that you can work together on a particular piece of work. We can also share hardware. So in our particular school, you know, we have about six or seven big printers that all the students can log into and print out their work. We can also share an internet connection. So we'll have one big major internet connection coming into the school and then that can be split between all of the different devices. We can also install software on all the computers at once. So we can connect to all the computers and install one particular uh, piece of software. The communication's better. So for example, we can have internal mail and insta inter internal instant messaging, which means you know you can send messages and emails between yourselves and it's much quicker. Also, we can have user accounts, which is probably the most useful for a school. Otherwise, a student might have to use the same computer all the time if they're gonna save their work onto it. But with a network, and they save their work onto the network, they can then go and log onto any computer and still access their information. Final thing you need to know for the exam 
is the factors affecting the performance of a network. So what's going to make it better? What's going to make it worse? So bandwidth is the first keyword that we need to look at. I mentioned before that you could have one connection coming into the school and then perhaps that is split between multiple devices. So all the different computers within that building. So the bandwidth is being split between all of those different devices. So if your bandwidth is limited, so if you've got a small bandwidth, you're trying to split that between multiple devices. You're not going to have enough bandwidth to have a fast connection. So your performance is going to be slowed down. Latency is the key word, which is referred to as the amount of delay on the network. So for example, when you send a request and you want to send a file, the latency is the amount of time that the amount of delay that occurs when you're trying to send that particular bit of information. Wired networks are much faster than wireless. So one major thing affecting the performance of a network could be how many wired connections you have and how many wireless. The type of cable that you use can also affect the type of performance. Fiber optic is the fastest cable. Wireless can of, often have physical obstructions and interference. So for example, if you're in a big office building or a school and every connection is wireless, the walls between the classrooms and the office offices within the building are going to be obstructions and cause interference. Error rate is known as the most is known as the amount of packets of data that can be lost during transmission. So in other words, when you're trying to send a file, the error rate is how many packets of data that are lost. Now, if you've got wireless connections, these can often lose packets due to the interference or the obstructions on the, on the network. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. Please press like and subscribe. Thank you.